crafters and welcome back to the crafty meraki youtube channel my name is deepa from designs by d and today i am sharing a christmas card for christmas in july and what i want to do is show you how to use everyday stamps and dies and use those to make christmas cards so you don't have to buy anything new but you can stretch the use of your stash now, I just want to say a quick hello. My name is Deepa, as I mentioned before, and I am a new addition to the Crafty Meraki team. I am just so ecstatic to be a part of the team and to create videos to help you with your card making. So let's take a look at what we're going to be using today. I'm using the Love Forever set. So I've got the stamp set, the coordinating die and then also the coordinating stencils and we are going to make this into a Christmas card simply by changing the color scheme that we use and using a few other sets that are a bit more Christmas related. So the first thing we're going to need is a panel of white cardstock. I've cut this to about six by seven so it can fit into my Alta New stamp wheel. Now I like using the stamp wheel, especially if I'm going to stamp something out and then add ink to it with stencils because of the sticky mat on there. So the first thing I'm going to do is take out my Love Forever stamp, which is a gorgeous stamp by Emily Midget and it's it's breathtaking. I, I'm, I don't even have words to explain how beautiful this one is. And I chose this stamp because it has nice big flowy flowers, even though it's not a poinsettia, that's fine. Um, we're going to make it red for Christmas. And then it also has these little buds that come off the sides. And I really liked that look for a Christmas card because those buds, we can make them white to kind of go along with the Christmas theme. Now you can see that I'm cutting down my panel a bit here. And the reason why I'm doing this is that when I do use my stencils, I want to be able to get them to stick to that mat that is in the well of the stamp wheel so that I can um, ink up this image nicely. Now these stencils, come as a set of five. They're all labeled one through five. It's just a, um, a suggested um, order in which to add ink to your image, but you can do it in any way you want. There are little registration marks if you were going to make this an A2 size card so you can line everything up, but I am basically just going to line everything up using my eye. I'm using a family of reds. Now, if you're familiar with Altenew, you know that they have different families of colors and I just chose the family that would work the best because it's easy. I don't have to, you know, pick a different bunch of different colors and it just, it all goes together nicely. So I picked the rouge, crimson and velvet. The first layer you can see, I just added ink, nothing special. I didn't do any darkness in one area, lightness. I didn't do any gradients. I just covered it with color. Now I put the second stencil on and I'm adding some post-it notes. Now these are fully, um, they're completely covered in stickiness on the back. And I'm just covering up those little buds that I had mentioned that I wanna make more white in the end. Now you could just be very careful with your ink blending, but I find that I sometimes go over. So this is the best way to go if you really want to do this perfectly and neatly. So I'm just adding the next color of ink. This is now the second darkest and it's crimson. And I'm really kind of concentrating that color in the center this time. So darker in the center and a bit lighter along the edge, uh, uh, sorry, along the edges. And I'm grabbing a dry towel just to wipe that off because once I take these post-it notes off, I'm not gonna throw them away, I will reuse them. Um, I can then mix on a lighter color. So I've got, um, I think this one is Morning Frost. It's a, a gray tone, but it has like a little bit of beige to it. So it's not completely like a cool gray. It's a warm gray, which is what we're going for with this Christmas card. And you can see I only like I lightly tap that color on there. I don't want to make it completely gray. I want these to stay more white. And then once that's done, I can go ahead and complete the exact same procedure for the next color of ink. So I put that next, the third stencil on, I've masked off those buds, and now I'm using the darkest red, which is velvet, and I'm deepening the center of those flowers. I really want those centers really dark. And then the outsides, the, I want them to pick up the color, but they don't have to be as deep. Now again, I'm using the towel to clean up the stencil. The reason why I do that is if I don't, then when I do mix this gray ink with the buds, it may catch some of that red ink that's still there on top of the stencil and just kind of muddy the color of those buds. I really want them completely gray or completely white. So now that that's done, 
I'll go ahead and grab the next stencil, which is going to do the leaves. So I'm using some richer or more kind of muted Christmas tones here. I've got um, a evergreen, which is the darkest green I'm going to be using, and then forest glades. Again, these are all to new inks, and they're in the same color family, so they match nicely. Now this time, I am really doing some ink blending with a gradient. So I am really, really concentrating that forest glades closer to the flower, making it really dark. And then as I go out towards the edge of the leaf, I'm making it not so dark so that, you know, you get a bit of depth. That's all this does. When you make a certain area darker and another area lighter, it kind of gives the leaf or the flower a bit more life. So I chose to go with the reds and the greens to make this very blatantly a Christmas card. You know, red and green, 100% Christmas, right? And then I also have the buds in white. If you wanted to, you could make this a little more different. Um, if you wanted more of a subtle look, you could actually make those center flowers white and then just mix a little bit of gray in there to give it shadows and then keep the leaves green and then maybe you do the background red or maybe you don't do red at all you keep it green and white you could use that color scheme and that would also look Christmassy as well so don't feel like you have to go with the typical red and green even though you still want to kind of stick with Christmas colors something close to it you could even do this blue and white and that would still come out as a Christmas card maybe add silver as a highlight so all these types of ideas still work and you're using an everyday floral um, stamp set. Okay, so you can see I've pretty much, I've added ink to all of the stencils now. And I'm actually gonna go back. So you don't have to do this. I'm only doing this because I really want those flowers to be red, red. So I'm taking that first stencil and I'm coming back in with more crimson. So it's gonna kind of mute some of the detail in the stenciling and that's okay because my main purpose is to get a red and then I'm also going to add my own detail here. So this is not required. If you want to do it, you can. If you don't want to, you can see you don't really have to. You can still see the details in the stenciling, but just to step this up a little bit, I do want to add some uniqueness and I say uniqueness because it's just a personal touch that's all the personal touch is what basically makes the card your own it's something that you know someone else could kind of recreate but it's never going to be a hundred percent the same so when I make cards I really try to make something that is going to be unique to me and I give you the tips to make your cards unique to you so as I said you don't have to do this you can keep it simple and just leave it as is but I'm using some red Prismacolor colored pencils to just darken all of those lines, add a little bit more shading. And then you can see that since I added more of that crimson red to the flowers, they've kind of lost the highlights that they have. So then I'm also going to come back with a white pencil crayon and I'm going to add some highlights back into these flowers. And if you're like me, and I do this all the time, I forget my highlights. So my trick to adding highlights, when I color things in, I, I forget the highlights. I always wanna see color covering everything. And then in the end, like this, I'll come back with something white, a white pencil crayon like this, or I'll come back with a white jelly pen if maybe I used um, Copic coloring or something like that to add those highlights. And when you do that, you'll notice a big difference in the look of your um, image. You can see it already. It's starting to pop just a little bit more. It has a little bit more flowiness and um, realistic, um, just, just more of like a, an organic look is what I would say. And I just want to emphasize that you don't have to be any type of artist or anything. You can see I'm really just haphazardly adding lines. So, and I'm following the design. So for the flowers, I followed the lines to darken those areas. And then in the areas where you put your lightest ink, that's where you can put your highlights. It's already kind of mapped out for you. Same thing goes with the leaves. For this, I'm solely, I did a little bit of shading on the first leaf because it's the largest, but as I went along, I just basically darkened the veins. And that darkening of the veins just makes this image look a lot more dramatic because that's the look I was going for. If you wanted to have a more subtle look, then you don't need to add any of these lines and you can just use the ink blended version on its own. So I'm just gonna finish adding my details in here. 
And once I am done, then I can go ahead and cut this out using the coordinating die. Now, originally, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to use the die or not. You could just cut this down to an A2 size and stick it on a, um, an A2 size card base and then add a sentiment and be done. But um, I always have to make it a little bit more complicated. You'll find as you see my videos coming out, I just I can't keep it simple. So I'm sorry if um, my cards may be a little bit more convoluted, but I will always tell you ways to make it more simple. That way, if you do want to do it in a simpler way, you can. Okay, so one of the things that I always forget that you can do, which I want to remind myself of and show you here, is that you can always emboss with your foil plates. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm just attaching the foil plate to my green cardstock that's um, it's size 5 inches by 7 inches, and you can see that that plate is not going to cover the entire cardstock. So I'm doing half of it at first. I'm placing it on that rubber mat, which is going to go on my platform, and then I put like the harder embossing mat on top. I run it through, I've got half of it done, and then I have to do the other half. If you do it properly, you will get that line, okay, you're not going to get rid of that line. And um, I kind of debossed one, one half and embossed the other. If you do it the right way, you will emboss the entire piece. Uh, you're, no one's going to notice that I've done it two ways there, so it's not a big deal. I'm still going to use this panel, and I'm going to use that fl floral piece that's going to cover that join in the center where I've got that deep line. So you really don't have to worry about that here. So moving on, once I've got my embossed and debossed background there, I'm going to use the canopy leaf dies and I'm just using the smallest frond and I'm going to cut it out of some gold glitter cardstock. In the end, that's just going to be used for a bit of interest on the card. Now I've got my sentiments, I've got the Mary Tag dies, and this has Christmas wishes um, in a nice scripty font. So I'm going to cut that out of some white cardstock, and I'm going to cut it out of some gold glitter cardstock, the same one I used for the canopy leaf. So this is just going to tie that gold in from the design to the sentiment. Now this is my neat little trick here. This is called Artist Tack Dry Adhesive, and it comes in these uh, sheets you basically pull the sheet apart one side has stickiness on it the other side does not and I use this to basically create stickers out of these more intricate die cuts like these um, scripty sentiment pieces uh, if you're somebody like me who forgets to kind of maybe put a double-sided adhesive on the back of your cardstock before you cut it this really comes in handy it's kind of like a Xyron um, sticker maker machine However, it's more manual. You don't actually need a machine, you just do it by hand. So you stick down your die cut in between the sheets, press it down and it picks up the stickiness and then you can stick it on whatever die cut or card or anything that you want. Now it is removable, you can pick it up and move it around and then you burnish it and once you've burnished it, it's permanent, it's not going anywhere. Now I will include a link to this and all of the products, especially from Crafty Meraki, everything's gonna be linked in the description below so you can go ahead and check all of those out there. So now that I'm done with the sentiments, I'll go ahead and cut my card base. I kind of just take an eight and a half by 11 piece of white cardstock. I cut it at seven inches lengthwise. Then I will score it at five inches widthwise, fold it, get my crease nice and in there, and then I just cut off the extra bit. And this is the easiest way I find to cut my cards, especially when I'm doing five by seven. Now I cut down this panel just slightly so that I get a little bit of a border around the card. And now it's just a matter of assembling. So now everything is gonna come together nicely. We have two Christmas elements, which is the jolly holly embossing um, that we did with the foil plate. We've got the canopy leaf, which is generic. That's not really a Christmas product. The Christmas wishes obviously has to be Christmas because we want a Christmas sentiment. And then this gigantic floral, which takes up the entire card is an everyday floral. And that's the main point that I want to make. If you have like a couple sentiments or even you just write it out in some nice font and you use your nice large um, stamps and die cuts and things like that that are generic and add your Christmas color scheme to it, you have a Christmas card and you're good to go. And you didn't have to buy any extra products in terms of, you know, your main stamp set.
So I used some larger foam circles to add to the, um, the large floral piece. And then for the smaller die cuts, I've got these tiny little foam squares. They take a little bit of time to add. I, I only added about five here. You don't need too many. You could attach this just flat straight onto the card, but I always like to add dimension wherever I can. That's just a personal preference. As I said, you can always adjust the design to work for you. Now, I, you, as you can see, I cut up that one little frond from the canopy leaf into three pieces. And I'm just spreading it around behind this floral design. You can see the floral takes up so much. You really probably don't have to, but I just like adding that shine and tying in that gold to the sentiment. Now I actually have a little trick for the eyes in Christmas and Wishes. I do not have the little die cut um, dots there. So what I'm gonna do instead is just add some small little opal gems and those are gonna be the dots for my eyes. So that's my little trick there. Okay, I'm almost done, I have two more steps. So I have these Nouveau Dream Drops and this is in Golden Shimmer. And I just wanna add these to the center of these flowers here. It's pretty, um, the way it looks here, it looks pretty opaque, but once it dries, it's going to have more of a golden shimmer to it. So it's going to blend in nicely and again, tie in that gold. Now I've also got some icicle stickles here and I'm going to add these to the white buds. And I find that it just kind of highlights the whiteness and the shine. I, you can tell I add a lot of shine to my cards, but I just find for Christmas cards, you kind of, I like that elegant classic look and I feel like the shine goes with it. As I've mentioned before, you don't have to add all the shine. I just, I, I like the extra shine. That's just me. Now I'm going to finish this card up now. Finally, I'm adding some of these gold gems, gold pearls here. They're actually called the Crafty Meraki Gold Opal Gems. There's a link below for these. These work perfectly with this card and just give it more of that classic look ties in all of that gold going on. And you can see how this floral worked out perfectly for a Christmas card. So I hope that my card today has inspired you to create something similar yourself. Um, I hope that you can see that you can stretch the use of your stash in this way just by changing up your color scheme. Don't forget to check out the Crafty Meraki store. Everything's been linked below. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you again next time. Bye.